you, you better. You this guy says we're pivot. You understand just how we living. This for me is like rap religion. Open my own beat because we got this Skype. When it comes to this, y'all, I can get it hype. When it comes to this, y'all, calm has risen. How you living, huh? Yo, how you living, pivot? Get to talk to my fellow Chicago boy, Rashid, also known as Common, one of the the top guys in the hip hop game who transitioned into acting, um, won a little award called uh, the Academy Award, and has been so prolific in so many different arenas. I had no idea how he juggles all this, but we're about to find out. How is the sound? Is the sound pretty good? It's good, man. Okay. Thank you. Let me ask you a question. How does this sound? Ah, come on, guys. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I Coming like to that. the stage, the former Chicago Bulls ball boy. Yes. <laughs> An I Academy was. Award winner. Common sense. Yes, Rashid. yes. You know what's so crazy what's... is that's when I met you. I think that was 11 of, I don't even know how many years ago. Yeah, that was, dude, that was maybe 16, 15 years ago, because it was in 2005, I believe, um, w- right when I had auditioned for, for um, Smoking Aces. And then, you know, we just started. I, me- I-, I met you before then, maybe just a little bit right before then, I believe. But yeah, man, it's been 15 years, brother. I'm ball boy for the Bulls. We both Chicagoans. It's, 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 a, it's a joy. You're a South Sider. I'm a North Sider. Both of our mothers are teachers. Yeah, there's a lot in common. You've you've got an Academy Award. I've got some Emmys. I'm yes. incredibly jealous. I mean, the, the reality that <laughs> I mean, I got to be honest with you. It's in your trajectory is insane because yeah. when I met you, you had never acted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had um, I had only been in acting classes. I had never the first film I got to do was with you, man, like uh, Smoking Aces. And that was the, one of the best experiences I've had, like just. Just, I mean, for me, it was like, that was my first callback, man. The first time I ever got a callback. It was the first, so many first, first time I seen a storyboard. So it was like getting that experience with you, somebody as, as talented as you. And then we just, we just vibe, man. You know, we was hanging. I remember we went to Vegas and because I was wanting to be in character, I was like, let me carry your bags. And you was like, okay, okay. You, you, at first you was like, man, why you want to carry my bags? I'm like, you know, I'm just getting in the mode of, of, of Sir Ivy at that moment, so. I, I love it, man. I remember, to be honest with you, I saw you on stage at the House of Blues, and I immediately called up Joe Carnahan, the director, writer, and I said, Joe, we found our dude. Because, I mean, what you're basically doing up there is spoken word, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you had a presence, <clears throat> and it, it, was, it was both dangerous and, and accessible, and um artistic and 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 it it was it was everything all at once and i was like man i mean i've never seen someone in another arena that could convince me that he could cross over like what i saw with you because there were moments where you you know you you were performing it was like a play you grabbed the stool and you burst into rage and i was like man what is going on and I, i hit up joe immediately and I just said, yeah. we, we found our guy, man. This is. Dude, dude, you understand how grateful I am to you for that. Because, like, coming into the acting world and getting into, you know, doing movies, like, that was, a, that was the best way I could, like, that was the best introduction. Getting to work with Joe. Like, Joe is, to me, just incredible, man. Like, he, he gave us music for our characters, different things that, I learned on that set that I take with me to this day and how you just as an actor, the level of your ability and your talents and then to still be like open to just supporting me and like just, you know, it was just a vibe. So I'm so glad that you came to that show, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Th- listen, thank you. Now, now give me a job, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need you to come. Yo, come on, man. Come, look, we got to work on something, some more stuff, bro. Cause you know, I, listen, count me in. And I got to tell you, listen, and this, I have so many questions for you, but one of the many reasons why I, I was enamored with you and then took you under my wing is because you, 
even though you were a superstar in your in your arena, you know, you were a student from the jump and I could tell that you had no ego, you know, yeah. and, and but with everyone, I would see people in, in the airports come up to you, you know, and say, hey, listen, listen to this song real quick. And you always had time for everyone. It was crazy. Yeah. And you put the yeah, headphones yeah. on and you were and you were honest with people. You know, yeah, you, I you got man. Yo, Jay, I learned early, man. I'm not going to sit there and tell people their stuff is good if I don't think it's good. That's unfair to them, you know, like, and and I got to do the same with myself, too. Like, when my work is not there, like, not only will I do it, I got friends that be like, yo, that, that shit was whack, bro. You need to, <laughs> you need to come but we, better than that. We, but need, we need that in our lives. I, I wish we, we had that. I wish we had more of it. And we all know those people who have yes men around them, you know, you because they, they don't continue to evolve. They don't, they don't evolve, man. And it's like. The people I see that excel and, and, and continue to like rise and, and is like, you know, I would say the majority, a lot of that is obviously their own like passion and will. But then a, a lot of it also is just the people they surround themselves with. I mean, we just saw that in, in the last dance. I mean, Michael Jordan was Michael Jordan. He was sent here to be the greatest basketball player. But Scotty Pippen was incredible. Phil Jackson, Steve Kerr, Dennis Rodman, like all those pieces mattered to Michael Jordan being who he is. So I definitely believe in the team, in the in the the support of the team, and also the challenges of the team. You know. Yeah, you know it's so interesting because you 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 were there back in the day. I don't even know how you got that job. By the way, I don't know if you okay. were. In the Jesse let White me, tumblers, I don't know what you were doing. No. <laughs> let me tell you, I got the job. Let me tell you, I got. It. My father played in the ABA for two years. I had no idea. Right, so he played in the ABA, and he played with Rod Thorne, who was the general mm -hmm. manager for the Bulls. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to visit my father, and it was an All Star game in Denver. My father was taking me. We didn't get to go to the All Star game, but we were walking around doing, you know. So he was, we ran into Rod Thorne, and, and my father was like, yo, my son loves basketball. You know, at the time, I wanted to play basketball. I wanted, I'm thinking I, could, I wanted to go pro myself. But he said, my son loves basketball. He, he would love to be a ball boy. And Rod Thorne was like, tell him to write me a letter. So I wrote a letter, and I got the job. I mean, obviously, it was the connection of my father. But the letter, I got the job. But I was only there, Jay. I was there from 84 to 86. So I was there when Michael first came in his second year when he was injured. By his third year, I felt like I was getting older and I wanted to play myself. So I wanted to play ball myself, so I left. What, was there something that you noticed about his vibe that was different? Um, I felt he had a confidence about him. He had, a, for lack of a better word, an air about him that was like, truly like he really believed. As You know, I was... 12 years old so I was I, as I look back I can see that this was like about belief about like faith in, in oneself and also one thing I'm, I'm, I'm noticing now is some of that faith comes about when you know you put in the work too like one of the reasons I was like I could look and say yo Jeremy tell me these things and just I was willing to I wanted to pick your brain was because you put your talent with the work you've been studying theater and, and acting for so long and and that to me means something because you just can't have the talent you know Mike had the talent but he had the work ethic too and you have to have that so that's what I noticed about him a funny story though is he came in to the locker room the first exhibition game he was he had this red radio and he was playing Houdini he was playing Houdini playing it loud too Rod Thorne and, and it was like, yo, you got to turn that down. You can't do that. No, that's not what we do. After that first exhibition game, he played whatever he wanted ah, in that locker room. As friends, loud as he wanted. how many of yeah, us, have, of them. us have, them. have them? Friends, friends. Once you can't, <laughs> I like how I'm singing and you're the one that should be singing. <laughs> no, nah, man, you got it, bro. Houdini. It's in, it's in both of us. That's bringing friends, me back. Houdini. Yeah. That's bringing me way back. Do you, I remember one time being on the set of, of Smoke and Aces. I could tell you were a sponge. And I was doing a crazy scene where I'm just in a bathrobe with a gun to my mouth and I'm ready to, to off myself and I'm losing it. 
losing it. Yeah. And I'm I'm going into the belly of the beast. And I remember you came, you were outside, you know, and the door is closed. And after the take, you came in and you said, I don't know what just happened, but I could feel something. Something was going on in here. And you were, I, I'm trying to remember what you said, but you could, yeah. you could feel it. I, basically, basically, no matter how new I was to, to um, you know, acting in, in on a film or, or even acting itself, because I had only been working with in acting class for about, I started in 2001, so that was 2005. I'd only been acting for four years. But one thing I did know was true. Yeah. And you, like, you would, you basically had to, you, that scene with, when you were in the, in the uh, mirror and you had to go through an emotional ride. And, and man, one of the d deepest things is somebody looking at themselves in the mirror and, and seeing all the things that they don't like things that, you know, the fears that they may have and whatever you did, you took us on that ride, you know, and I was, that wasn't even the end product. The end product was exceptional, but I'm saying I, from the beginning, the core of filming it, I felt it. And I was like, I had to come tell you because, you know, that's just how I believe in, in acting and, 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 and work that we do as artists. I believe in the truth coming out and you just was able to convey that Every take, I remember because you did it like nine takes. Yeah. And I remember Joe Carnahan was like, "How many actors you know could really do that? Like, how many actors in Hollywood can accomplish that?" Like, and I was like, "I, you know, I had never been on the set, but I was like, I don't. I was like, man, this is exceptional because you did every take and had the true emotion. Like, it's times where I see people with tears that I necessarily may not." I may not feel it. Right. I can see tears coming out, but I don't feel that. Yeah. I don't feel whatever the actor is conveying. Don't go anywhere. How You Live in J-Piven will be right back after we pay some bills. Squeaky doors, clogged sinks, finicky engines. When things break around the house, you take care of it. However, when something's off in the bedroom, you try just to not think about it. Come on, man. What are you waiting for? Take care of it. Go to GetRoman.com slash Piven right now. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash Piven and complete an online visit. It's easy, man. Don't be ashamed. Just take care of it. Solve the problem. Go to GetRoman.com slash Piven now. You'll get $15 off your first month. If medication is appropriate, it ships to you free with two-day shipping. It's simple. It's easy. You don't have to be ashamed. Just solve the problem. And then literally everybody wins. She'll thank you. I'm thanking you. You'll thank me. We'll all thank each other. Let's just be thankful. Get hard. Get hard, you little freak. Go to GetRoman.com slash Piven now. Hey, are you ready for some fireworks? Not the ones popping off outside your window until 2 a.m keeping you up. We're talking about fireworks you feel when you finally get life insurance coverage. There is no better time than now to apply for life insurance because it's not just temperatures that are rising right now. Life insurance rates can go up each and every year you want to buy. So you got to act now. If someone relies on you for financial support, whether it be a, you know, a child or an aging parent or even a business partner, you need life insurance. Policy genius. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. You can save $1,300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. Getting started is easy. First, head to policygenius.com. In minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. Policy Genius never sells your information to other companies, ever. Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fees. It's all included. Head to policygenius.com to get started right now. Policy Genius. When it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. You bet. You, you, you bet. It's such a gift to be able to play and to be given the opportunity to do it. Yeah. You know, and I don't yeah. take that lightly, you know, and you know, um I you know, 
and you know this now more than anyone. We're going to get to that in a second because you've grown so much as an artist. Um, and we're just at the beginning. But just to, to respect the space you occupy when you do it uh, is everything. And I've noticed that you always do that. No matter, even I'll, I'll see you on a commercial and you're not phoning it in. I mean, yeah. you're, you're totally present and you're committing to it. You know what I mean? No, ma no matter what it is. And now you're producing and, you know, you're still doing your thing in so many different areas. And how, I mean, I don't even know how that happened and, and how you figure out a way to, to find the time to manage all these plates that you're spinning. Well, I think, I think the time we met, Jeremy, it was like, man, it was really a breakthrough for me because I had just come off of like, I had a downtime where I didn't know what was going to happen. Like with my music career, I was in a, like the first heartbreak I ever had in my life. Like, um, you know, it's relationship wise. And I just was down. And through working on self and just my community, you know, going to God and learning more about building faith and, and that and belief in myself and not being afraid of that belief was when I was in, in that time period with you, like like just working, like like when I met you, that's where I was at, like I was, and I think, you know, with the success of the, the album B, which is where you came to the House of Blues, we were performing the album B at that time, and get, being a part of Smoking Aces, and just seeing certain things in my life coming to fruition by having faith in myself, and faith in, in, in trusting in God, it was like, Oh, this is what it is. I can't accomplish these things. I just got to do, I have to do the work, believe in it and see it. But I have to first be passionate about it too. Like, just so you know, I never, I wouldn't have taken on acting if I didn't feel like this was in my soul, like it was something in my heart. Because I tried other artistic expressions and I tried it and I wasn't feeling it. And I was like, I ain't going to do it just to do it. And my point is, like a lot of the things that I've been able to pursue and why I'm, like I'm, working, striving to get better as an actor all the time. I want to be a great actor, right? You know, so I'm, I'm you know, I'm studying, but when it comes to producing, I want to be a, be able to give people a platform to, to get their work out. And at the same token, you know, obviously it's great business, but it's also a chance to give people a, a, a chance. Yeah. You're, I mean, you're giving back and, and, and you can feel that. I mean, um, yeah, I remember when I met you. Uh, I don't know if you're still blessing your food, but you're you're yeah. you're a guy who before you eat anything, you you know. I noticed that no matter what, even if you're on a plane, whatever, you yeah. know, you're giving thanks. Yeah, well, I think um, yeah. I mean, I I definitely want to. I love I love to, and I need to, and I want to give thanks because I'm grateful for. for I'm grateful for the day, man. I'm grateful that we here right now. Jeremy, like, I'm grateful for that, to be honest. Like, so when I'm about to eat a meal, it's like, yes, I want to give thanks for the food because I know that this is this is a blessing to be able to eat and sit down and eat. And then if I'm eating something good, that's even, that's even better. But, Absolutely, you know, but, man. But it's like, it's not, I understand that there's people in the world that, that that don't have food. And at the same token, I'm just grateful that I, that I have the food in front of me. And I'm mindful, and the more I eat, that has evolved. I've taken a mindful retreat where I'm like, I'm grateful for the hands that made the food, the people that brought it on the truck, mm -hmm. the people that you know grew the food. And I think it's something in gratitude that um, that leads to like a, a certain happiness and, and and not worrying as much either. Yeah, and 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 worry leads to complaining, and and no one wants to be around that. And you know, right now. We're at a time where, I mean, this is like the great reset. You know, we're all resetting. Yeah. Yes. You know, and, um, I, you know, some people are going to come out of this stronger and others, you know, we're all in different places, you know, yeah. and we, we have to continuously deepen our good habits right now, you know? And do yes. things that we've we didn't have time for, you know. Man, that's such a, man. That's great wisdom that I will that I'm going to sit in that for a second because we definitely got to deepen our good habits. That's exactly what for me this time has been 
a time for me to stand still at peace, be still and like really find that peace, um, that inner peace where a lot may be going on in the world and, and you care about those things. But you also have to understand that, like, man, there's a bigger, a bigger um, motive, a bigger, um, a bigger like world that, that, that's happening. And that world is not of the worldly things that we see happening, meaning you know, it's plans, it's, it's bigger plans in, in all of this. And for me personally, it was like, what am I supposed to learn from this? What am I supposed to, how, how can I grow through this situation? And what are the, the blessings in this? And that's what I've been focusing on. And I think, you know, bro, I've been appreciating just sometimes stepping out and getting some air. I've been appreciating like conversations with good friends and, um, and, and just the, like you said, the food. Appreciating good movies and, and listening to music, going back, listening to 90s hip hop. You know, it's just been I've been grateful for things. And, and as you say, recharging myself, resetting and um, and really learning new things about me. Man, you, you, you just got to. It, it's 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 a fascinating time right now. And I, I know that people like you who are even though someone who may not know you looks at you and, and everyone's operating on a different vibration. And I think you're operating on a very high vibration because of, of your gratitude and your belief. And you see the bigger picture, you know, and there are a lot of people out there, you know, who are operating on a very low vibration and we're, I don't want to see us be divided. And there are people killing each other right now. You know, there are people that are racist. And, you know, I, I grew up, you're a South Sider, I'm a North Sider. Um, I didn't understand racism. I had to be taught what racism is. Right. I didn't know what it was. I remember I was playing football. I was one of the only white boys on the team. And they gave us a talk. They said, you're going to hear the N-word. And I didn't really have a reference for, I was, you know what I mean? I, I, I had yeah. to be taught this shit, yeah. which yeah. is crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yes. one of our players was this all-American wide receiver. And they would, in our bathroom stalls, you know, we're the, we're the, we're the opposing team. And they drew cartoons of him. And my only thought was, this dude is so powerful and yeah. so good at what he does. Right. You know, Billy D had a massive afro and they were just drawing pictures of him and talking shit. I didn't even see that. But I was like, he's right. so impactful that yeah. he he's renting space in their heads, but it was racist. But I yeah. I so that it's my journey is so crazy. So when I see people acting out like this, it blows my mind and it saddens me because we have to keep progressing, man. Yeah. And it's yeah. madness what's happening. And yeah. I, I you know, how how do we how can i help as a guy that's perceived as someone that is the poster child for white privilege when the reality is i come from a theater family and we were poor i grew up in an old folks home we didn't have any money you know yeah. what i mean but like i played characters that are wealthy and well to do so they think i come from white privilege I, i'm just a journeyman actor and i yeah. want to be a part of figuring all this out and letting people know that my god we're all connected what yes. what are you what are we doing and, yeah. and i and i come to you as someone that has a reach what can i do what can we do because it's got to stop yeah well i think you know i think it's important to do what we're doing one thing is is just sharing information and talking and like man hearing your perspective is important um and then like you know like a lot of the mission to me starts with that with that like self work that we both talk about, I feel like that's one of the things, one of the things I forgot about, like as I was striving to do so much in the world is like, yo, you got some things you got to work on yourself. I, mean, I had to do that point blank. And that being said, I mean, I, I, I know you, I know you, so I know you're one of those individuals who truly, you know, wants to grow and wants to be better at each and every day. So you're taking care of those steps already. I think what we can do tangibly is like, Find the things that we really, how we really want to affect the world, whether it's through voting, whether it's through like, you know, the rights for women's rights, whatever, all these, it could be all these things. It could be 
as getting getting theater in programs, uh, I mean, in schools in different areas that we know are affected. Like, I feel like providing opportunities for people in, in environments is one of the best ways that you can, because that, that education, and we both are children of teachers, that education is something they carry with them in any facet of life they go to. And that exposure is something that they use to be like, wait, I can do this, I can do that. And they go out in the world with, with fulfilling their purpose and their dream. So it's really, you know, I think that's one of the best ways we can give back to, to others. But stop the racism is a, is a man, that's a, that's a long quest that we could just do by example to me, man. Like, all I could do is like, really work at times because let's face it, Jay, Chicago is a segregated city as much as we, you know, it was, it was a segregated city. I, I, we love our city. I said, yeah, it's my, one of my favorite places on the planet, point blank, and it's home no matter what, but it was segregated. And, and the fact that we, that you did play on a football team with a black guy, the fact that I am doing films in different places in the world with multicultural people, that integration means something because we get to know each other more and, and see the things that are the same and see the things that are different. But but the differences don't divide us. Don't go anywhere. How You Live in J. Piven will be right back after we pay some bills. Lucy Nicotine is a company founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. Listen. It's a real problem. Uh, nicotine is harder to, to quit than, than heroin. So these guys, these scientists have figured out a way to do it. So let's get, let's get on board. Guys, it's 2021. All right. Get rid of your cigarettes, unplug your vape and get some Lucy nicotine gum or lozenges. What are you waiting for? This is the real deal. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. So it's simple. And you don't have to leave your house because Lucy has delivery down. Go to lucy.co and use promo code PIVN to get 20% off all products on your first order, including gum or lozenges. That's lucy.co and use promo code PIVN at checkout. Also, I have to give this disclaimer. This product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Lucy.co and be sure to use that promo code Piven. You know, it's interesting. As you were talking, I just realized one of the major ways that we can do this. It's Uh. it's through our art. You know, I I, for instance, I, I just realized that I have a story. I grew up. It's funny you say it's segregated. Yes, but where I grew up, it couldn't have been more integrated. Yeah, you know, we we, yeah. we we never had a white homecoming king. Uh, right. My 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 heroes, the the dudes around me that were the most charismatic, or t- talented, or athletically gifted, weren't white dudes. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm my reference was like I'll gravitate towards you because you make me laugh. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I, I don't. It, 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 the, and the casting at my parents' theater was always colorblind because we knew no other way. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I, had a, I have a different perspective, and I just realized as you were talking that the way to do it, because if, if we go out there and we try to preach this, we're going to look didactic, and they're going to shut us off. And I know you know from, from writing bars, you, you have to find metaphors, and you got to be insanely creative. So yes. I, I think what it is is going to be doing it through our art in terms of like, I have a story about guys I grew up with, you know, and then we come home and seeing the dudes that were the most popular in high school and integrated couples and they go out into the world and it's like, oh, oh, it's not the same. It's different out there. And we come back home and they're shell shocked and we all come back home for our, our reunions and exploring that creatively and if we tell stories whether it be film or tv or whatever where you get to know these characters and they're real and dimensional and then they go out there and experience racism that's not hammering someone over the head that's going this is real guys and this is what this is the way we we could be interacting and then 
this is the way you're treating us. And if we do it creatively and you're laughing and you're crying, the message comes organically. And I think that may be one of the best ways to do it. I think I absolutely think it's one of the best ways to do it. I believe that, um, you know, I mean, we've seen art change things and art. I always use the example of Moonlight because mm. Moonlight was one of the best ways to to show America and the world the diaspora of black males, mm -hmm. black men, yeah. like in a way that was like, it wasn't so stereotypical what you think a black man is. And, and it just showed another aspect, the sensitivity that this, this young gay kid from the hood whose mother's a crackhead, all things that he went through to be who he is and that existence and a friend of his. And this just, you got to see like, to me, that was an entryway into another place that people didn't know black men existed really like, or didn't think about it, you know? And I think art tells those stories just like music brings us together in certain ways. And then, you know, I always talk about, um, you know, like, well, now it's not Slumdog Millionaire, but Slumdog Millionaire, but the film that just recently came out, um, Parasite, where that was just really, <laughs> that was giving you like, the levels of classism, regardless of, and you kind of got a good look at, you know, and it's things like that, a good look at, at what different classes were feeling at that time, even though they were from the same race. Right. So I think that the empathy that storytelling creates, the connection and compassion when storytelling as well is much more effective than somebody preaching a, a thought to you or, or spattering out, splattering out some philosophy when you go to hear somebody speak and they just tell you, you need to do this and need to do that. It doesn't resonate with the average human being in a way that's effective. No, but w it's part of our, our gifts and our background and our art. If we can continue to figure out ways to illuminate the truth, you know, then we're yes. really on to something. And, yes. and I, I, I say, count me in, man. And even yes. this way that we're doing it right now, just being able, you know, technology is moving at the speed of light. And here we are just a couple old friends talking. And yeah. and this is kind of the new way that people are getting their entertainment. You know yes. what I mean? And yet technology yeah. is is flying, you know, and then we're going so, like this is like an old school radio play, you know, but they're going yeah. back to this because they need humanity. They need because we can't touch each other. We can't be in the same room so this is this is really powerful and effective yeah no i, I think what i'm getting to see uh, um with a lot of people during this time is like people are using their talents and their creativity um and their minds to to find ways to connect and find ways to be creative and put creativity out there i was just telling you that that i did i had to do a, a table read yeah. i did a, a virtual table read um I was like, man, this is this is unique. You know, it was it's not it's not the same as being in a room with someone. But, you know, the fact that we are in in this place right now where where, like you said, we we're dealing with um, this pandemic. So because of that, yo, I, we did a virtual table read and it turned out great. It was a new a new challenge for us. And I think human human beings are seeing that, like when you said we get on a higher vibration, we we able to operate and create things that we didn't know existed. We are able to connect in ways that we need to, um, and see that see that we all on the same level. One thing about this that I really respect too is like, or can see the the, the silver lining in is the fact that man, whether you're a celebrity, whether you you know a teacher, whether you you know got a lot of money, or you Latino, or white, and black. We all like affected by this, and we all had to stop for a minute and be still. So we all have a we all have a common enemy. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and it bring, listen, it brings us together, and we have to embrace that. You know, yeah. we really do. Um, I remember you uh, at one of my birthday parties. You got up on the mic and you started freestyling, and I was on the drums, and I was sitting in the pocket, and it was so much fun. I loved it. It was one of the greatest times I've ever had. It was a great birthday gift. And not a lot of people realize how gifted you are at freestyle. I mean, obviously, there, there are people that know, right. but there are people that haven't seen it in real time, and they think it's a trick or whatever. 
you know, and there are very few guys on your level that could actually do it. And I remember you, I mean, it was the longest freestyle I've ever seen in my life. And, you know, you were clearly doing it because you were playing off of people right in front of you and what they were wearing. And I'm in the pocket and my boy Todd who was yeah. the camera operator for, for Entourage, was filming the whole thing, and I'm just in the pocket going, oh, man, this is, I'm going to be looking at this forever, right? Dude. And then I got, the, I got it back, and I, re, and I looked at it, and he never panned over to me once. And so it's just <laughs> you. It's just you freestyling the whole time. I'm like, dude, I'm going to tell people that I'm on the drums, and no one's going to believe me. Oh, my God. It was I like, that. it was a night. But listen, it's all good, but listen, the only way that, w that we can make it right is if we attempt right now, I'm just going to sit in the pocket and uh -huh. you do whatever you feel. I'm going to move this mic over to my kit. Okay. I don't know how you feel about that. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'll do it. Let me, I'm with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give me one I'm second. I'm just going to, I'm going to move this operation. It'll take me a second. Okay. Okay. Let me see, when, once you start knocking them, I'll, I'll just um, let you know if, if we okay. need to speed, speed it up or slow it down. I, I feel like I'm a Make-A-Wish kid right now because we did, a, <laughs> we did a whole session and you were freestyling and no one knows and now we get to, we get to revisit it, which I love. <laughs> that, show was, right? that was a vibe, we had a vibe, man. That, that oh birthday was fun, man. You had some great birthday, man. And we had some great birthdays you, you, at you your house. You me with that freestyle, man. I loved it. Ah, woo, yeah. One, two, one, two, one, two, uh. Calm with the freestyle. Getting live on the hey now. We can keep it tight. Right now the sound might be going out on Skype, but nah, we keep it all all right. We can do this live thing, huh, all night. When it comes to this, yo, calm has risen. How you living, huh? Yo, how you living, Pippin? Yo, this is how we do calm sense, y'all. This is what I'm telling y'all, never took a fall. Or even if I fall, then I get on up. Listen to the style where I self-destruct, nah. I just came to build it up. What can I do, yo, the children know? Yo, Constance, yo, I guess I peeled the flow and let it be real with though. This is how I'm building, yo. Constance, yo, I get into it. Me and Jay Piv, yo, live on the music. Hey, y'all, hey, now. This is how I do when I come with the freestyle. We style, we smile, yeah. <laughs> I ended too goddamn soon, though. That was the shit, though. Yeah. That's good. It was good. That was amazing. You know what, man? It's so interesting. Uh, every time I see you, I'm so proud of you. And, Thank you. you know, for many different reasons, but I'm always happy when the good guy wins. Thank you're, you. You're thank one you, of bro. those dudes, man. And uh, thank you. Thank you for blessing us with your time, man. It was, it was amazing catching up. And we got to figure out a way to come together and be very creative again. I, I totally agree. Thank you, Jay. It's just great to just talk to you and see you again and just rebuild with you. As you said, it's resetting time, but it's great to, to see you and talk with you, man. It's someone who I love and honor and respect and just we've had some really great times, man. And I'm like, now let's go build on some creative things that, man, that light the world up. I, I believe we got some, some things we got to do. Count me and I'm ready. I let's am go. ready, man. Bless you. All right, bless you, bro. Love. Peace, man. How You Live in Jay Piven is a cast original podcast in association with Common Enemy and Tenderfoot TV. Producer is Kyle Tequila. Theme song by Common. Executive producer for Cast is Colin Thompson. Executive producers for Tenderfoot TV are Donald Albright and Payne Lindsay. Executive producers for Common Enemy are Jared Einson and Dave Osco. Catch all new episodes of How You Live in J. Piven every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts.